Yo, 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 what's going on, guys? This is your boy Culture back with Caged episode 20. Wow, we made it to 20 episodes here with Warlord and w Caleb or Wubba Wubbala. <laughs> I probably should ask w that earlier. Wubula. Wubula. Okay, Wubula. Probably right. should have asked that before you Yeah, that was 100%. Yeah, that's, that's my fault. 100%. Yeah, but Wubula, was straight, owner of uh, Straight Jacket Gaming. How are you guys doing tonight? I'm good. I'm good. Happy to be here. Happy to be here. Another night, but I'm excited. So we have some stuff to talk about. We finally have a guest back on the podcast, so it should be fun. Yeah, it was like a good 10 episode drought of just nothing but Akara members or like just Akara management. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was a wild right. time. Um, but anyways, <laughs> back of episode 20, big chilling <clears throat> with the squad. Um, so... We've had a lot of stuff happen this week, or what, like the past two weeks? We haven't done a podcast for two weeks, right? Yeah. That's right. Um, but well, some stuff happened. So, R6, we, yeah, they said so we were there when they forfeited that last map. They won, or did they forfeit? I think they forfeited another team, right? Or they win it. <laughs> Dude, I'm sorry. <laughs> God damn, it's been bro. A day. I'm so sorry. this weekend we're one and one. There we go. Win by win on a fourth, and then I guess we lost. I didn't even know we had a fucking match. I didn't know it was live. So, yeah, I knew we had a so match. I didn't like, know it was live though. Um, there was no post. There was nothing. Like I didn't know I what the hell was going five, on. I just seven, we lost. which isn't that bad. Uh, um, close one. Yeah, Omega was Omega. Bleh, Omega League was supposed to start um, this week. However, got pushed back two weeks, so we would have had three matches. Um, I'm excited to see where that goes because it's best of threes, and it's a lot. Um, you get to see a lot more, and you know, you can actually bounce back. You know what I mean? Like when it comes yeah, back to true. like, because everything's just so like, just so weird in a best of one. You just really know, like, you know what I'm trying to say. I am sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, the best of ones are fucking stupid, to be honest. Like, it's it's dumb. Especially when you're, like, in a league like that and you're playing that kind of competition. I think a best of one is fucking stupid. Like, I think it's unacceptable I, and it might for, be, uh, for that kind of league. Yeah, it might be one thing if it was, like, CSGO, where it's, like, a first of 15, or you might be able to get away with a best of one in, like, those kind of leagues. But, like... First to seven. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of it's a little lame, but that team's done it. Like our team's done a completely like turnaround. Like they were in like like tenth place or some shit, and then they went on a three win streak. I think it was, or maybe technically four win streak. I guess because yeah. that last four, and then they ended up losing this last match yesterday. What five seven? You said so. Yeah, now we're sorry. we're right in the hunt though. We're right in fourth place, so a good spot to be. The team that forfeited they forfeited against was the number one team as well, so it actually messed the, like made the standings a little more better for us. Yeah, and then the team we lost to is now the number one team. So yeah, it's not that bad. Close it's, matches. No, yeah, it's it's not too shabby. It's good to see. Uh, glad we're competing and not getting like Rick Roll. Because at first when we went zero and two and like the way we lost those matches, I was a little nervous, but. Nervous in yeah. the fact that, like, much factor because we should have won both those matches. And I was like, man, what's going down? But since then, four straight, and then we, you know, we lost last night. But fourth place, not too bad. Not too bad. And then. But what else do we have? Uh, Call of Duty. And Ooh. my oh my, our Call of Duty Fucking team Duty. is a <laughs> shit show. An absolute shit show. We'll start it off with basically our captain went to college. Um. <laughs> and so he wants to balance school and that's completely respectable you know let him do that but that dude pretty much was the glue to like our call of duty team for the past like what month maybe two months or so right and so he left um then everybody just kind of you know normal call of duty stuff it's the end of the game kids just mm -hmm. want to go back they want to delete modern warfare as soon as possible <laughs> Yep, yep, yep. And get Cold War here, but so that's essentially that. what happened. Um, but now that uh, Reese is uh, coming up, new captain, trying to build the squad back up to get us back up and running. We're not too bad in the Apollo League, two and two. Um, so that's not like we're you know in a drought or anything. So it's all good there. Um, but yeah, 
Call of Duty. But expect a new, expect a new roster again. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, now Reese was on our team though before this, so yeah. and I think a couple of the players that he's bringing back are also kids that are on our team. So yeah, probably gonna have a, a few familiar faces, but it's still a hey. complete a completely new roster for this league again. So we'll see how that works out. It's it's kind of wild, like how Call of Duty Call of Duty rosters are always wild, dude. And they really are. Like I, yeah. I think back to like even the previous couple titles, man. Like Call of Duty kids are just fucking wild. I can't even Call, go out. Like, like I mean, I love Call of Duty, dude. But like de- dealing with Call of Duty kids putting together rosters and like it's like egos and duos and all kinds of stuff like that. It, it's just it's fucking. That, that, that's a hell of a time. <laughs> that's a hell of a time. There's no doubt. I'm glad I'm not the only person that sees that. That's a, that's I know, a hell I know of a time, man. I'm, sl- I'm glad somebody <clears throat> else said duos because only, only, uh, everybody only talks about egos, bro. But like, whenever you get like a duo, and then like, you want to be like, yo, bro, your your buddy's kind of ass, <laughs> like, <laughs> or like it just doesn't work. But he's like, bro, but my friend, you're like, dude, do you want to compete or like what? You know what I mean? Like how serious yeah, I mean, are you about it? Yeah, you look at it. You look at like a lot of these Call of Duty kids. Like they all have duos. Like where one person goes, they both have to go, and it, it's just I don't know. It's and sometimes breaking up those eat like those duos. Like I mean, you end up losing both of them sometimes. So it's just like Call Call yeah. of Duty. I I have not had good luck building Call of Duty rosters last couple <laughs> <of> years. <laughs> But I mean, we 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 saw some we saw a little bit of success this year with the couple of rosters that we had made. But I, I'm glad this title is over. I'm looking forward to the next title. Yeah, new yeah. beginnings. That's kind of what we've had. Like even our last league, uh, we went through like 15 people and ended up having like a a really like awesome losers run and getting to like fifth place. But still, right. Like, and that was like out of like thirty something teams, and this Apollo League's out of forty, which is fucking insane. That in itself's got to be a headache. But uh, yeah, dude, the, I I don't understand these dudes who come out here and like, especially like the uh, compared to like other leagues, seems to be a lot of these smaller like Call of Duty leagues are maybe run by two people max, and so you just have like one or two people who are just sitting there slaving over every like roster move, every like so they have like forty different rosters. And then you have 40 different orgs or people hitting you up saying, yeah, we have to make this roster change. We won this match. We lost this match. It's That's got to be horrible. Yeah. You, well, you think about just on our end alone, like, I feel bad for has to hear our fucking shit every time. <laughs> hey, bro, another move. Oh, who left this time? All. Oh, all four. We got four new guys coming in. And it's just like yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I, went, I went through that. I went through that a couple of times this year. Went through that a couple of times this year. That's been wild. But that's our. Uh, those are our two teams right now. Our six team, fourth place, currently at what four and two. I said or four and three, something like that. And then uh, um, Call of Duty. I don't even. Don't even they're ask what places they're in. They're I, like two and two. I, I, I don't know what they're, place. They're two and two, but I don't, I don't even what know place. what the damn brackets are like in that Dude, one. I, I hadn't even looked at this night. Dog, I don't even know if the sheet is updated, bro. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, that spreadsheet was a mess. So Dude, we're two and two. Just know that, I guess. Yeah, that's true. Um, and like, we have the R six cha- Canadian Challenger League team, which mm. is the the biggest headache out of all. We don't talk about them a lot, a lot on the podcast, and we don't mean any like disrespect to our own players. But <laughs> well, that's going to be interesting <laughs> because they have, we have relegations coming up, so that's going to decide if we actually get to stick around in the Challenger League or not. And from what I was told, is we're doing some roster moves, which you kind of had to when you only <laughs> win like two or three rounds, not like like rounds in the Challenger League. Yeah, their so, overall like um, round count was something like, oh man, <laughs> there was something like well, they, four well, in played, like fifty two or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> it was wild. They definitely got in like over their heads, especially the way they qualified, I guess. But three, I mean, three solid people could change that whole outcome, at least making relegation. So Yeah, that's true. We're, we're, we're praying over here. I think it's going to happen. Uh, 
I kind of hope they bring on some U.S. kids and you know stay stay clear of nothing but Canada because there's you know just a shit ton of talent yo, yo, and Wubs. you're allowed to have like U.S. people there. All right, no. I mentioned the Wubs, bro. <laughs> I I like Wubs. Yeah, I hit him up. But we'll see how it happens. Uh, but yeah, um, but rele- the relegations is coming up, and they will be competing in that <clears> to see if they can keep their spot in the Canadian Challenger League for R6. So. But it's good experience. Like no matter what it happens, at the end of the day, like it's it's good experience for like us as an org, dealing with like actually dealing with Ubisoft and you know Face It and all those like big time companies, like actually like getting the experience of like them, like even if these dudes lose relegations and we don't have a team, it's like eventually another team is gonna come out in qualifiers and not have an org and you know we'll. You know, something like that might happen again. Yeah, speaking of that, I wonder when Ubisoft's going to pay these guys. Like, I haven't got no money yet. Maybe. The <laughs> everyone, well, it's two stages. So, like, stage one, I don't know what the prize pool for, like, what the canon was, but I think it was something around, like, 80000 or some shit. Something like that. So, I'm trying to, I'm curious when they're going to pay out. I'll have to send them an email because they were asking me about that. And I was like, I have no idea when anyone's getting paid because Ubisoft has not let me know. But, I'm sure it'll be soon. Yeah. Don't worry. That's, a, that's never good business. <laughs> that's never good business. Hey, Not for, when you're getting paid out. Yeah. And I'll be honest, man. Like, we had him. This is like one of our first, like, larger leagues that we've been in, like, actually dealing to face it in Ubisoft. Right. And they need to get their shit on track, too. Like, I'm looking at you mm-hmm. face it. Like, you've had a nightmare when it came to, like, the whole email spree and, like, trying to get in contact. And this is like, I remember telling my guys, I'm like, dude, is this what it's like when, like, you get a pro team or some shit where you got to deal with Ubisoft and face it? And I'm waiting for contracts and, like, all these uh, non disclosure agreements to be sent and, like, nothing showing up. And they're like, oh, yeah, it should be there soon. But it needs to be in by this date. And I'm just like, bro, like, I'm waiting on you to send me the fucking documents. <laughs> like, I don't know what you're trying to do, but it's it's a headache nonetheless. So we'll, uh, we'll roll past that. So that's R6. Yeah. And, uh, a little bubble there. And then, well, we'll talk about gears later. Oh, well, yeah. Right after this, I guess. And we'll start it off with that. But that's our teams. Anything else? Um, you want to mention on that one? Well, we can mention real quick just the uh, new content creators we picked up. Um, let's, let's scroll. Here we go. Um, we picked up Carnifex, Woofy, uh, GRXR, Avid Storm, Just Blue, and Typical. Um, on the on the first wave, and then we also picked up uh, Parquad and Squalub, my boys, for the uh, for some Call of Duty content, which will be dope to have uh, again. Because um, with Cold War coming out, it'll be it's pretty like crucial, like you know, as an organization to come out and like have like content as soon as a game drops, <clears> so <throat> you can get people yep. who are like still devoted to Call of Duty at the end of Modern Warfare. Like, then they're definitely going to be, you know, around the whole time, like at the beginning of that game. So it's going to be awesome. Uh, it's going to be dope. We almost played Team Summertime. We should have, we would have beat them because we beat the team that beat them, but that would have been sick. <laughs> but yeah, other than that, not really a whole lot more. Fucking native, like throwing shade at me. I get it, kid. I haven't had a haircut in a minute. Like, fucking relax. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, so yeah, there we go with our teams uh, and our new content creators and streamers, which kind of excited for that one. We brought on some more talent, and rumor has that we're gonna have another like a another second wave because like now that I'm actually looking at like our applications that we get on the weekly, I'm starting to realize that we could we're probably passing up on a lot of people that would benefit us a lot more. So definitely gonna be looking at those applications more than usual so we'll go from there applications are a but, bitch though I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if you did not hear back on one please do not send four more i promise you that one is still there <laughs> you don't have to worry about it i promise you it's still there yeah that's that's the truth that is the absolute truth um but yeah so other than that why don't we just go ahead and talk to uh caleb here man so uh you're the uh, owner of uh, Straight Jacket Gaming, and uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
and you and Nick probably could talk a lot more on that subject than me because I'm just I'm just the producer guy here so we'll let the owners talk here for a couple minutes and I'll just kind of sit here idly by in the background well no it's just I want to hear about Kayla I just want to hear about his background who he is all that good stuff and then we'll get into the whole team and org aspect yeah fair because those those are always fun talks just to <clears> see <throat> the kind of headaches and the experiences that other owners go through and uh, I get to get to see if I can you know match my experiences of what you guys have so Caleb just take it away man let's just who are you and uh, just go ahead and give us some information oh uh, man I, I just I'm just a gamer man I mean bottom line that's all it is I mean unfortunately this year uh, with Call of Duty being so bad because I usually just grind Call of Duty from release until the very end like I, I'll grind it all year long this year I haven't haven't enjoyed it at all so I've kind of just not really played a lot of games I went back back and played some older CODs but I mean like nobody's really got eyes on older CODs like it's there's no reward in grinding older CODs um, right. played a few single player games you know on stream stuff like that but I'm just looking forward to this next season man I, I need a game to grind I love grinding games so I mean, I'm hoping we'll, I'm hoping Cold War is grindable. If it's not grindable, I'm literally gonna lose my mind because there's only so much single player games and older games that I can go back and grind. Like, <laughs> I need something new, refreshing. Like, I need to, I need something. So, but yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm just a grind. I'm just a just a gamer, man. I love playing games. I've always I've always been a gamer um, since pff, probably Super Nintendo days. When I was super young, my dad had a Super Nintendo. I played that. I played Nintendo 64, PlayStation 1, all the way through PlayStation. Now I've played all the Xboxes, the Wiis, you know, Nintendo DSs, Game Boys. You know, I've I've always been about it. Always been about it. So, I, I, said, I mean, other than working all the time and playing games and trying to get my feet grounded under the steam, man, that's that's literally all I do. That's literally all I do. Now. How is it like trying to balance like a normal work life, social life, and then obviously you have your team? Do you ever struggle with that when it comes to like no, the whole time aspect, no. or are you have you got it down to the point where you're like, no, I, I I I don't have much of a social life, man. Like I I go to work, <laughs> and I come I go to work, I come home, that's it. Once I'm in the house, hey, that's it. You know, I'll turn the turn the computer on, turn the PlayStation on, and that's it. And I play games until I'm ready to go to bed. So I mean, the social life. I, I just I'm just not really into it, man. I, I just like keeping to myself, just kind of being a homebody. As I, I mean, the that. social life, you know, going out, partying, you know, doing stuff with people is just not really not really my scene. Never has been my scene. So, but like I said, I, I'm I'm just a gamer, man. So I mean, I'm hoping this I'm hoping this next year brings something for me to grind personally. And I know if if it's something that I can be motivated to, then my motivation will transcribe into my team. Which unfortunately we haven't really done a lot this year because we've had some up and downs with the Call of Duty roster and just motivation from my not there not being any motivation from myself, you know. And then obviously, if I'm not really into it, you know, everybody else that's you know around me is just like kind of just doing their own thing. So, but I, I've I got a group of guys around me now. I, I I had to run it all by myself there for the for the longest time, probably since. Uh, the end part of Black Ops 4, middle part to end part of Black Ops 4. I've been doing trying to do everything myself. So now I've got a couple guys around me that I think I think they're gonna be some real heavy hitters for us. I think they're really gonna be able to help me to be able to push us to try to start getting things rolling. Hell yeah. See that's what you need and that's what I found that I needed. Like when you try doing everything solo and if your motivation right. isn't there, it's fucking nothing gets built nothing gets going so like i i totally understand you're coming from in that aspect once i uh because what a lot of people probably don't know like on my team at least like i was ready to end akara gaming like back in march i was ready to just call the quits we were gonna just pull the plug and then i this guy here culture was getting in my head he's like nah man like i'll help and then what we ended up doing was like building a management base where i brought on like six seven other people right right yeah yeah divvied it up and then there we go it's like it's way easier and to like maintain and then you know other people being motivated kind of brings the motivation like out in myself so yeah 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 i, I feel you i was in that boat too back in i'd say it was probably i think it was around in april 
think it was kind of around in April. Uh, I was just kind of like, man, like this Call of Duty is just horrible. Like I've I have no motivation to stream to play any games. Like all the people that we have on our team aren't really doing anything. I was ready to call it quits. And shout out to my boy KJ. Got got into my head. He's uh, he's gonna be a. Uh, he's been rocking with us for a while. He uh, reached out to me and just kind of you know just kind of told me like you know, like yo you guys have a really good base. Like let let's just let's you know put all that bullshit aside and let's just let's just go after it. You know, so I, I'm I'm if I have anybody to thank for us being able to start pushing to the next level, it's definitely KJ. Uh, literally, my saving grace for the team to kind of be revived and kind of really start getting things rolling. So uh, he's he might be watching, I'll be watching. But I mean, if he is a hey, KJ, yo, appreciate you, my bro. Damn! Shout out to KJ. Let's yeah, that's get it sick, going. Man. Like, right. Yes, sir. That's a, that's my boy. That's my man right there. Oh yeah, man. And like, yeah. Sometimes you just like, like I can't. There's been a lot of times where like me or Hitman, like the the co-owner of Akari Gaming, have just been like. You know, especially with, like, Corona, like, especially that time, like, the whole COVID thing, it really just brought a damper on, I'd say, pretty much everybody in the world. Like, no right. matter who you yeah. were. Like, if you just played video games, like, even if you were, like, like, you are, I'm a home buddy, too, but, like, if you're a home buddy and you just sit at home, it, it makes it worse, because then, like, instead of being, like, choosing to not go out, it's like, damn, I really can't go uh, out. Now you really, yeah, <laughs> yeah, now you really have no choice, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I feel that, I feel that. So, uh, yeah, the, so then everybody just gets, like, down, and sometimes you just need that person to come in and be like, yo, dude, like, we got this, we can do this, and it's awesome yeah. that your boy was there to help you with that, man, that's awesome. Yeah, now, now like I said, I got a, I got a couple, of gr- couple of guys that are with me, you know, really, I, I think I have a really good support system around me now, somebody that, you know, we have the, the same ideas, the same mindset, the same goal, and I think, you know, not only, you know, can I not only have more hands on deck within the team, but I don't, I don't feel like I have to handle everything myself. Like I can, right. I can kind of dish off a little bit more of the workload to like, you know, like, Hey, I need you to handle this. You can handle this, you know, that kind of thing where it's not like my phone is just constantly blowing up and things that I have to take care of things that I want to take care of, you know? So yeah, man, like, I mean, I, I've always just kind of tried to do everything on my own, you know? So, I mean, now that I've got this group of guys around me, you know, it's, it's super nice, you know, to have people that, that actually want to work with you and really yeah. want to like push you to do the things that you know that you can do. So, so yeah. So not only shout out KJ for reviving us, but shout out my boy, Johnny, shout out my boy, uh, Matt. Those are, those are my boys. You know, we're, I'm ready. I'm ready to get going, ready to get going. That's dope, man. Like that's that's good to hear because it's just like I can just relate to that. So it's it's nice to see other people. Like once you once you get a few guys on your team, man, and like they're they're gun ho. It's like it just makes things so much easier, so much better. Not to say things don't you know still become difficult, but at least right, you have right. other people there that are like willing to take it head on with you. So yeah, yeah for sure, it's for nice sure. to see. So right on. So let's talk about your team. Let's talk about your org. What's going on with that, man? When did you decide that, like, you know what? I want to have a team. Like, what made you decide to, like, well, go that route? It was not really not really to have a, a team specifically, but, I mean, back in, I think it was Black Ops 3. Black Ops 3, I kind of, I, I took a break from Call of Duty, like, really playing Call of Duty. Um, probably after, I'd say probably Modern Warfare 3, around in there didn't really play a lot of call of duty i mean i i didn't have a lot of internet access at that time so i was just mostly like playing campaigns playing offline bots you know stuff like that just kind of single player stuff uh black ops 3 i kind of got internet back and you know i just i, I kind of just started playing with a group of guys you know we just kind of just basically like a clan like type of thing where we just all play together you know that type of thing and that's when i really started getting into the whole like esports and like whole like competitive play and all that kind of stuff so um, uh, you know, origin originally Straight Jacket Gaming wasn't even mine. Uh, that's actually a uh, ex owner, ex co owner of ours, uh, actually presented that name to us. And okay. at the mo at the time, like it, like I mean, he he came up to yo, let's call our name, you know, let's be this. And I was just like, hey, you know, fuck it, let's roll with it. You know, uh, that happened probably around the first part of Infinite Warfare, I think. 
was okay. when we really was when we created straight jacket gaming is when we kind of just started putting ourselves out there but we really didn't do hardly do much uh until black ops 4 really i mean we had a competitive team in world war ii but i mean that we kind of just fell apart after that and i just we just took a break i didn't really know how serious i wanted to get into running an actual team until probably the first part of black ops 4 you know so like i said the the original uh, the origin of straight jacket gaming didn't even really come from me it, it just kind of started as just a group of friends playing games together and then it kind of just i, I just kind of like saw like you know the optic gamings the phase clans you know all these big organizations i was like yo like that's kind of cool like you know, like I want to do something like that. So, you right. know, and that's when that's when we started like brainstorming on names, and he presented that, and I was just like, "Yo, let's just roll with it." And it's a dope. Now, here name. we are like, now. I, I like the name of the team, no doubt. Yeah, that is pretty sick. <clears throat> Sorry. And then now, here we are. Here we are. So, right on. Then, so when it comes to owning a team, and I'm just gonna start. You know, I'm just gonna throw some random questions. It's just shit that I deal with, but like. What what is the biggest headache when it comes to like being the owner of a team? Well, it has to be rosters, no doubt. Rosters, right? Okay. No doubt. It has to be rosters and I mean aside from like if you take the team aspect out of it, I I I've I think a social media presence is huge. I think it's super huge to have a, a social media presence. Um so I mean it, it's super hard like with my work schedule because I work so early in the morning that you know I'm I'm in bed like if it wasn't for if it wasn't for this podcast, I'd already be in bed right now, you know. So I mean, a social media a social media presence is I think is super huge. So I think that's a super hard uh, thing, not only for me because we struggled during our modern warfare season. Uh, we had a little bit of success, and I actually had to give all of our login information to one of my players. You know, like hey, I need you to tweet out updates, all this good stuff because I, like I couldn't be up at nine ten o'clock at night when they're playing their league matches because I had to be up at one two o'clock in the morning to go to work right. you know so social media presence i think is super huge and i think that's kind of super difficult if you're running everything on your own which now that i have people behind me you know i've got somebody dedicated that's going to be running our social media um so yeah social media is i think is super difficult if you're doing it by yourself rosters are always a super big headache um and then it's just really just like i think it's just like dealing with trolls to be honest with you like people that'll like dm you like their youtube links like hey check me out like <laughs> no I'm, I'm not gonna check out your youtube link you know what i mean and people that'll you know dm like hey i want to be like I, hey i, I want to be in your team like okay well what what do you do do you stream do you make do you right. create content do you do this do you do that you know oh i stream but they don't ever stream you know what i mean so yeah. it, it's just just dealing with like a lot of like trolly people, I think. I think uh, or like the dudes that like ask to be co-owner, but like the during Infinite Warfare, they sent you like a scam Ray Ban link or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's happened. That's not a lie. <laughs> like <laughs> uh, the guy that asked to be co-owner, but then you find him on like six different rosters. Like, what the fuck is going yeah. on, bro? Yeah, oh, yeah. I've, bro. I've, I've dealt. I've dealt with a few of those people too. So I mean, I just. <laughs> You know, you after a while, you kind of just like, you know, you see DM requests, you open it up and you'll see it's just like a bunch of links. You just start deleting messages like I, I don't even feed into that stuff anymore. <laughs> that's smart. Yeah, that's just <laughs> you really can't feed into it. No, that's why I'm kind of glad, like before Twitter never had it to where um, you'd have message like requests. So like, right now, like I feel kind of bad because I don't, you know, they don't follow me or whatever. I don't like see those messages anymore. But every mm -hmm. once in a while, I'll go back and I'll take a look and be like, what did these people like? What were they sending me to like? And it's the same bullshit all the time. It's like, right. Hey, you yeah, yeah. A, you, know, you need a player. Hey, you need this. Yeah. And yeah, like, yeah. And I mean, it, I mean, it's like, not, yeah, do this. It's like, oh, come on. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's not like it's not like, you know, we're not like turning you down instantly. But uh, it's just like, you know, like, I mean, be a little bit more respectful. You know what I mean? Like, don't just. Don't just follow me, DM me your YouTube link, and then whenever I don't respond or I don't follow you back, like you just unfollow or block us, you know, stuff like just petty stuff like that. You know, I just, yeah, I just don't deal with it anymore. Like, if I get on Twitter and I see a DM, like I'll open it. If it's like some bullshit, I'll just delete it. You know what I mean? And then people <laughs> like asking, like, hey, are you interested in sending us to this land, sending us to this <laughs> land, putting us in this tournament? It's just like, like, bro, like, Nah, uh, nah. You know, the kid that's in our Twitter league <laughs> is like asking for salary. You're like, bro, what the yeah, fuck? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh, come dude. on. Yeah. 
I no, love I it. Miss those, I miss those messages, to be honest. Like, I like the ones where I used to get where it was like, the most unperfect, like, hey, yo, what's going on, bro? Hey, I got like four other players. We got a team. You need yeah, us? Yeah. And I'm just like, wait, what? That's like, well, I literally put a, a business email for that reason. Think about these clothes are like so wild the, on this stuff. Think about say. the way you picked up me and Native, though. I don't yeah, like. But, but, well, well, think of the time period of when that was, though. That's true. The dude, like, who wants to play Call of Duty? And I don't even know how I found a car gaming on Twitter because I'd only been on Twitter for like three months at that point. <laughs> and like, yeah, dude. And you're like, who wants to play Call of Duty Black Ops 2? And I was like, yo, I don't even have the game yet, but I'll hit you up when I have it. <laughs> and then you hit me up. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. See, I, I, I actually miss those days of Twitter because, like, it was just like strictly gaming type stuff. Now it's like, I don't know. I don't even want to go down the whole politic and social justice road, but it's just, it's a different place now than it used to be. So yeah, yeah for sure. You just try to adapt. I try to ignore all that stuff, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's different, but I get what you're saying on those, like the trolls and the, the rosters. Yeah, are yeah, all like, I just, a headache. Yeah. I just like, if I'm, if I'm not in a mindset where I'm like, yo, like I want to go after a, a specific team or like i want to go like i want to look into like a specific a specific person i want to bring in like a specific streamer or content creator you know like i'm not just openly like just accepting people on the team just to accept them like i yeah. you know i i used to at, at one point you know people would reach out like hey i'm interested in streaming for your team all right yeah cool let's get it you know just trying to build out your roster but now now i've kind of taken a step back and i'm like okay i i need i need to build my team with people that are actually doing something to bring eyes to my team. Like, I think, I think, you know, I think it's super important to give people a a chance, like a platform, you know, I think that's super important, but also like at the end of the day, like, you know, we're trying to run like a business, you know what I mean? In in a sense. So, I mean, if like, if you're not benefiting me any, or if you're not like trying to bring eyes to us and we're not trying to grow together, like, you know, like we just are, we're just not going to be able to work out together, you know? So it it took me, it took me a little while to kind of, you know, really like realize that kind of aspect. But now, like I said, now that I've got other people around me and, you know, we have specific like uh, business goals that we want to accomplish and things like that. Like, you know, you kind of have to start weeding people out that aren't really, you know, really doing anything to kind of either help you grow or you guys aren't mutually uh, benefiting each other. So. I feel that because I know when I first started Akara, it was it used to be like, a, oh, wow, this guy wants to be part of my team. And I wouldn't even second guess it. I was like, Yo, right, wait, yeah, yeah. and you yeah. bring him on. And then what you end up finding out is like, well, a, I got a lot of inactive players. Yeah. B, I got a lot of people here just trying to like, you know, they're not loyal. So there's they're, they're team hopping like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. like it, it definitely Got to the point. I was like, "Yo, you can't just like say yes to every single person that shoots you a DM." Yeah, but it, but it back then it was like, "Well, dude, I want to like get as many people as I can, and then their followers are hopefully." Fo-. And it was just, yeah, yeah, it's the way like it worked it. back then. But it, it's, yeah. yeah, now you can't. It's not even can't even yeah, try no. that. It's, you got to really weed out who you bring in. They mm-hmm. have to be in some way like beneficial to your squad, and it's yeah. it's just a different time now. Yeah, like I, there's just like not a lo- lot of loyalty in my eyes really anymore. Like there's a lot of people that you know will want to join just to say I'm on a team, but they're not really, right. like they're not really doing anything for the team. They're not wanting to do anything with them. They just want to have a team's name in their bio, essentially. You know, and they're not streaming. They're not uploading anything. You know what I mean? So, exactly. yeah, like I, I mean, I think it's super important. You know, now, and I'm finally happy that I finally realized it now that you, you know you can't just accept people just to have a huge like just to have a bigger roster you know or right. to, how many more followers can i get how many more retweets likes on this specific tweet can i get you know right. now like i've now i've kind of just opened my eyes to where now like like i have a platform i have a i have a platform like i need to start putting people on this platform that's not only for them but it's also going to benefit us as straight jacket gaming you right. know what i mean so like I said, that I mean, it took me took me probably a year, year or so to really just kind of just be like, is really having thirty five people on my roster really worth if only two of them are actually streaming and actually bringing eyes to my team? Like, nah, exactly. like let's get rid, let's get rid of everybody. And if you're streaming, if you're bringing something to the table, you know, let let's start working and benefiting each other. You know, other than that, like, 
gotta get you you know gotta get you out of here so yeah right and when you find those loyal people like you'll know it and they'll stick around and like it's just a way better position for your squad and that's yeah. what I've done. that's what we've come to realize like even when you bring on some people like you never know you think you know who you got but you never know what could happen in a month down the line so i think when you when you finally realize like you probably you said if you bring on 35 people and only two are playing like you have to have that motivation that point to be like hey it's not working out we have to do something right Rock right moves like crazy and I, that was another thing i used to struggle with back in the day and i know chris would know it's like man i used to actually start feeling bad i was like when well, i brought this guy on the team they're like yeah but he doesn't do anything and then i used to like make excuses for him and eventually i was like dude like you got to put your team first you got to like right, i'm all for right. i'm all for the individuals and stuff but if they're about the team then it doesn't matter so and one eventually thing, yeah. you make those moves the one thing I'd say on all that is one thing you also have to like look out for is like there are people who were also like completely a hundred percent down and they do stream, they do produce content, but they can be toxic as hell, man, and they can completely right, yeah. like ruin your image and like we've had to drop a few people for that, like for sure. And uh I don't want to drop it. I'm not going to say any names, but like they know who they are if they come across talented us. people too, though. Yeah, That's what makes like, it hard. Like, yeah, talented people and. And it's, it's what sucks, man. But like, well, at the end of the day, you have to realize, like, okay, like, even though you're down from my team, like, you're wiling out on Twitter saying some shit you shouldn't say, or like, you're yeah. saying something on stream that's ridiculously offensive. And it's just like, man, I'm sorry, but I'd say you gotta go. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean that uh, that just ties back into like you're trying to run a business. You know it's what old. I mean? Like, I, I mean, exactly. Yeah, like, I mean, we we have a name to uphold. Like, if you're, like, disrespect, if you're disrespecting us on the timeline on streams or you're being disrespectful to other people, like, openly disrespectful for no reason at all, like, you're not only tarnishing yourself, but you're also making me look bad. You know what I mean? So, I I just don't put up with that kind of stuff. I mean, the people that are around me, the people that are on my team, they know what I'm about, you know? So, if if they're bringing on some some sketchy-ass people, like, nah, like, either either no, they're not coming or both of y'all can go. You know what I mean? So I'm, exactly. I'm, su- I'm super thankful that the people that I do have with me right now, we all share the same goal. We all have the same kind of mindset, you know, so that's, that's super important to have like people who are down for you, you know, that have your back, not only as people, but like are also there to just rock with you, like as a team, you know what I mean? So exactly. I've, I've got a couple, I've got a couple of guys that like don't really do a lot of streaming and stuff like that, but they're just down for us. You know what I mean? Like they'll do anything that we need. You know, they're always there for it. They're always supporting us, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, super good support system, I think is really, really important. And that's, that's something that I value more than just like how many, how many like viewers are you getting on your stream? You know, like if you're super good, you know, and you're like super respectful, you know, you've got like a really good community, you know, you're being super respectful not only to like the people on the timeline but like me as an owner and and the team that i'm running you know stuff like that that's what i value more than anything exactly man yeah 100 percent same way over here because like i mean if you look at some people like for example our boy matrix that dude has been around longer than i have he's he's and, exactly who i was thinking when he was it, saying that he yeah. doesn't stream at all but every single time we post something he retweets it bro yeah. made, like Dude retweets it for both his Akara Matrix and personal Twitter. Like, right, he's out yeah, there, yeah, bro. Like, so, yeah, hundred percent. He's about the he's about the team, and he knows even though yeah. he's not like playing his games and stuff. Like, if anything pops up with this team, like the dude's about it. If yeah. like I hadn't heard from him for a little bit, I posted the link. I was like, yo, we got New Jersey. Who's the first person like that's pop? Yo, we got New Jersey. I'm like, <laughs> Matrix, what are you doing? What's up, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, for, sure, just, for sure. Just, you, you, those people, like, they benefit you, man. Like, you just. Yeah. It's and it's, it goes to that support system where it's like even though they're not always out there, like you know deep down, like when shit goes down, like yeah, that guy is going to support you, and that's what I've realized. You know, like people like Native in here, he's been around forever, disappears sometimes. He's in the military, but I know when he comes back, like the homie's about a car game, he's about me, he's about like right, yeah, our yeah. team and the people in it. So it's like yeah, for sure, for sure. I got I got some guys on the team that are in the military, you know, and you know, first and foremost, thank you for your service. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I, I come from a military family. You know, I've got right. a few people in, on my team that are in the military. You know, so first and foremost, thank you for your service. You know what I mean? So I mean, that's that's all. Like, that's just so important to me. You know, like like I said, I don't care if you have 
a million subscribers or five subscribers, you know, or a hundred thousand viewers on your Twitch stream or one viewer. Like if, if, if you're out there and you're trying to be positive and you're trying to just be super cool and you're like respectful to the people that come into your stream or people on your timeline, you're respectful to me and straight jacket gaming, you know, like, Hey, like I'm going to fuck with you and I'm going to do anything that I can to make sure that you're getting what you need and anything like that. So that's, uh, that's all that I want at the end of the day. Like give me the same effort that I'm giving you. And you know we we we'd be straight over here. I like that. Yeah, and that's so. the way it goes, man. Like I, I fuck with that. I understand it exactly. So then, what's next for Straight Jacket Gaming? Like, what do you, Ooh. what do you, what do you want? Like, you know, twenty twenty is almost over. We got the new COD coming out, but like, oh yeah, yeah. And yeah. what what do you want to see in the future? Like, end of twenty twenty, going into twenty twenty one. What are some goals that you have for like, you know, and you can throw yourself in there too, because you own the team, right? But like, what are some goals you have for you and your team, like coming into, you know, going into Cold War and 2021 as a new year? First first of all, first of all, I need 2021 here. First of all, get 2020 (laughs) out of here, bro. Get 2020 out of here. Yo, people start wearing your mask, get COVID out of here, bro. Like, okay, (laughs) first of all, but no, I mean, I feel that. (laughs) I mean, I, I mean, I, I've been streaming for like a few years now, like off and on a few years, you know, I personally, I want to be able to make affiliate and really start, you know, getting my stream game out there. You know, uh, one of our guy, one of my guys, Logan, longtime best friend, uh, has been affiliate for a couple months and he's killing it, killing it, like getting five, 10, 15 plus viewers every stream. Like he's got like 40, 50 subs or at one time he did, you know? So, I mean, he's right. killing it, you know? So I, I, I want to make affiliate personally. You know, that's a personal goal. Maybe hopefully by the end of the year, I don't know. I work in retail, so my work schedule is going to get kind of hectic in the next couple of months. So hopefully 2021, I want to make, I want to make affiliate for personally. Um, but for the team, I mean, I've got, I, we've got some stuff under wraps that I'm not, that we can't announce right now. Yeah. Um, obviously we are going to have a call of duty team. You know, we got some, I'm working on some things. Um, so I'm I'm hoping Call of Duty is super super good because I want to grind that game and I know if it if it's a super good game then that's something that I can put my motivation and my time into. Um, then we've been kind of looking to expand into some other titles. Um, not really, we haven't really settled on a specific title just yet. Uh, I know we're all super big fans of like the Rainbow Six Siege scene, the Valorant yeah. scene, the Gear scene. You know, so we'll we'll see kind of what happens with that. Um, Got some merch stuff that's going to be getting designed. Uh, and really, other than that, just like really just uh, for the team, just using the platform that we've already built and just snowballing on that. Like we, I mean, we have a good foundation. Like, let's just start building on that and just really starting to try to get ourselves out there. I feel that. I feel that, you know, 2021 does need to get here. 2020s has been such a, well, Here's the thing, like if for as a year, it's like a horrible year for like for us in Akari Gaming, like it's actually been not too bad, which is just it's wild to say because it, it's benefited us as a team. But as a year, like it is, it's been just so fucked up, so much right, shit going yeah, yeah. down. Can't travel. I can't even go get a fucking like burrito down the street <laughs> without some shit going down. It's like it's 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 wild. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I think, but like, I'm in the same boat as you. I think we really need Cold War to come out here and just be be the title that like to revive a lot of this community because the the main issue that we've had and just players that I've talked to is like you have players literally quitting like literally quitting their teams and like quitting mid like leagues and events just because they can't stand the damn game anymore. Yeah. yeah and that's for something sure, like for sure. even back in like infinite warfare, like that game was kind of trash in my opinion, but like I wasn't seeing as many people like literally just like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to go play uh fall man the rest of the year. Uh, call me when the new call of duty's out. I'm like, the right. Fuck? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. you've always, you've always been a COD player. Like, yeah, you know, I'm going to take a little break. So hopefully uh cold war can come out here and, and I, I think it will. I mean, at the very least, Treyarch's going to do what Treyarch does, and they'll at least listen. So even if it's not what we expect at first, unlike, you know, Infinity Ward, like, they'll actually make the changes to get it to a, a playable point to where we're like, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some yeah, issues, no, I mean, but at least they're they're working with the community and the players, and we can see something coming out of this. And we talked yeah, about I mean, that. Oh, sorry, go ahead, you, man. You go ahead, man. And, uh, like, I mean, like, historically, Treyarch has always been, 
like super good Call of Duties, you know, competitively, you know, for public matching, which is what I do a lot. Uh, and I mean, they've always had like super good campaigns, zombies. I know the zombie community is waiting <laughs> on Treyarch to come back, right. you know. I think Black Ops 4, not a lot of people really like the, the Black Ops 4 zombies, you know, so I... I Tre- Treyarch, you know they need they need to revive it, you know. So I I know Treyarch is going to do what they do best, you know. So I'm I'm regardless of how good or bad the game is, like hopefully it, hopefully it's just a playable. Hopefully hopefully it's just playable, you know. If it's playable and you know for the competitive side, if they really try to focus and really like prioritize competitive, I think that's I think that'll be super huge, you know, especially for this you know this franchise league that we're in now, like. There's no way these orcs should be paying this much money and have zero sub- like have zero developer support. Like that's insane to me. So I'm I'm hoping hoping for the best. If I don't know if you guys saw it, but like um during not today but yesterday during the winners finals, there was a bug that stopped a BZ from going through the uh bottom middle door on Ramaza. And apparently the bug is that if you if you throw a smoke on that door, it'll like act like somebody standing in front of it and block it. So he was literally running full sprinting into the door, but it wouldn't open. And it yeah, 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 I saw that. I saw that. I saw that. Four point five million dollar tournament. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's wild. That's, I mean, yeah. it's. I mean, it's stuff like that. I mean, what can you do? You know what I mean? Like. I mean, obviously, I know, like, with it switching to online, like, obviously, there's not really anything you can do about that. But, I mean, like, players getting booted offline, like, the whole, like, uh, like where they're basically having to forfeit maps because they won't allow them to replay it because they got booted offline. Like, I mean, like, yeah. I, can pro- I can promise you if I'm down 30 points in a hard point, I'm not going to go and unplug my router so I'm booted offline just so I can hopefully get a restart. Like, like no, no competitor is thinking like that, you know? So... I, I think I think the way that the league handled a lot of that shit is is super bullshit, especially for it being this multi million dollar buy in league. Like stuff like that and stuff like that is crazy. And how they apparently done a lot of uh a lot of work with like the MP five stuff. Like I'm not really sure on the specifics of what happened, but they like put out a patch for the MP five like mid tournament or like four days before champs or something like that. Like yeah. you <laughs> like you don't do that kind of stuff, you know? What they did like, was they uh, took the uh, so like the FTAC collapsible stock, which every pro uses on their MP5. They made right. it so where um, so I guess the original MP5 wasn't actually centered completely. So mm-hmm. then what all what they did was they re- <clears throat> made it actually centered to the screen, and also made it to where like your screen was covered up by the gun by like fifteen percent more or something like that. And that's like right. the Tuesday after playoffs, so four days before like the final four play. Yeah, like, so uh, like like put that put that patch out like before playoff starts. You know, like when they like after last home series, right before playoffs, I like, put it out then. Don't put it out four days before four days before like a five million dollar tournament. Like you don't you just don't do stuff like that. So. And also say that the patches won't be affecting uh, any of the guns that the pros use. That was an act- yeah, actual when, tweet from Ashton Williams. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. I saw that. It was like, I saw that tweet too. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, like, stop bullshitting. Yeah. Like, come on, now. <laughs> like, <laughs> like for real. Like, what are you guys doing over there? Like, and there was that whole like at the beginning of the year, there was that big uh, like developer live stream where Joe Ciso said that, uh, or however you, however the hell you say his last name, he said that uh, call like competitive Call of Duty has ruined the game and as a whole or something like that and then it's just like you make the worst competitive call of duty ever on purpose yeah, yeah. essentially like yeah like i i think they should have done it i think they should have started franchising with with treyarch i mean we always know treyarch is always going to have a really really good game you know and even i mean there's always going to be things that people complain about people don't like any time a call of duty comes out i mean that's just how call of duty players are yeah. you know but at the end of the day like historically like treyarch has always had really good games you know whether it be public matches or competitive you know so i think for teams playing you know paying all this money to get into a franchise league like they should have started it on a game like cold war or even black ops 4 where they know that they're going to get developer support, where they know they're going to get an actual playable game, 
you know, because I, I literally feel for all these owners and everybody that's paid this much money in and just completely got shafted by the developers the entire year, you know, that like, that's just unacceptable. And there's a lot of yeah. like, the problems with, uh, you, like I get the shift to online is a big deal, but like call of duty should have had the, the pillars in place, like a long time ago to where we should have had dedicated servers and if yeah. like pros did play online because back in the day what black ops 3 the entirety of the cwl and black ops 3 yeah. was online like so there should have been points before where activision should have looked at their developers and said hey we need dedicated servers like all these other games out there we need to like do a lot more but now you come to 2020 and OGLA and anybody on the West Coast are at a disadvantage because there's one server out there on the entirety mm -hmm. of the West Coast and every other team's going to veto it. Yep. It's, just, it's, it's a joke. <laughs> yep. It's just that's what it's I'm saying. Wild. Like, I mean, I, I mean, I understand like the COVID thing was like sudden, you know, but I mean, like you said, I mean, you've got to have, you know, you've got to have that stuff in place for a rainy day kind of thing. Like you have to have emergency stuff already already set in place no matter no matter if covid didn't happen or not like there should yeah. be things in place just in case you know because i mean you never know you never know what will happen you never know so i don't know i'm i'm hoping i'm hoping cold war is better you know i'm hoping cold war is better not only just for people who love playing public matches but for the competitive scene you know because i love watching competitive call of duty you know so i mean if competitive if the if the pros are just not filling it and developers aren't listening you know like there's no there's not even any point in really having a franchise league if there's no kind of support between the players and developers and everything like that so yeah it's yeah, tough so. scenes it's tough scenes well especially when you when you get down to like the asking prices of what these spots costed yeah. Like I could, I could see a franchise no matter what. And my thing of the CDL and why I've been like anti CDL has just been like the buy-in fees to what some of these people were paying for these spots. You know, mm -hmm. upwards of twenty-five plus million dollars. And I'm just like, to this day, I'll never see how they're going to get a return, like a return on investment, which I think they will not get a return on investment. I don't think so either. No. Not, not for, not for that money. Not for what is being brought on for Call of Duty. Not for, I mean, even the, the only sponsor, team that like, can possibly get a return on investment is probably the Chicago Huntsman. And I don't think they will. I don't think it's even possible because I, I don't. Not from the league itself. I'm yeah, talking about money the coming from the, from the money league, coming from the league. Like, like as a as a franchise, like yeah, you're you're hooked on the NRG. So you're still gonna you'll be okay. I mean, even NRG, I don't think they're making any money, man. Like that's the one thing that Kevin Nash always or not Kevin, Devin Nash, not the wrestler, that's in my in my head. Devin Nash always talks about he's like, dude, none of these orgs, even your top orgs, like they're not making money. He goes, and his eyes were like, what TSM and he thinks a hundred thieves are like literally the only two that he thinks are making any kind of profit and that's mostly because of like their apparel lines and shit like that yeah so, so when you see someone throw in like 25 million dollars for like uh optic la i'm just like bro where are you getting like where's your return on investment gonna be from this like i don't i don't yeah. see the, not yeah, for that i don't kind of mm -hmm. man. like i was no. cool with franchising but when i heard those price tags i never thought they'd reach like that kind of like height no yeah. i i don't think i don't think I don't think it should have been that high the very first year, regardless. Like twenty five million is like a like insane for a buy in, especially for a first year franchise. Like there's you, no, there's no way. How do you justify it? Like what do you show them that goes like, hey, well, this is how you're gonna get your money back? Like you have really nothing to like fall back and show like league wise. What are you gonna do? No. Use Overwatch? Overwatch, they've lost their ass on that league. It's still around, but no one's made any money on return investment on Overwatch. Like once yeah. you look at the once you look at the numbers. So I'm like the problem with I Overwatch I think is that they like held on to one title for too long. They brought a bunch of people who are like gamers who are like ADD and shit like that who want new titles all the time. Like they didn't manage to get like the Counter Strike players. They managed to get the people who sucked at Counter Strike and like wanted and like wanted a new game to play so like <laughs> it's it's true it's it's true like you don't have to aim in overwatch i can play overwatch on a keyboard and mouse and i fucking suck with it <laughs> like it, it's it's not a hard game to play so you get those players who just like always want a new title 
who always wants something new and you make them play the same game what overwatch came out in like 2015 or 2016 or something like that maybe earlier yeah and so like for the past five years like those type of people aren't going to play the same title that long no. and those viewers aren't going to enjoy the same title for that long <laughs> we kind of got sucked down the cdl rabbit hole i'm not gonna lie <laughs> we were yeah, but it's just it's what it's one of those topics I will always like. I could talk about it forever just because I just find it so fucking stupid on how it's yeah, operating, no, how it sure, runs. For sure, it's just like as a business guy, you're just like, man, like I know I'm not a big wig or like a real big brain guy on this situation, but it's just common million, sense. Twenty five million dollars for a Call of Duty spot with nothing to show and like wanna, no really. Like, how did Astro? Like, I mean, I get it. Like teams like like hastro like i know envy's huge right and they're always going to be a call they were always going to be there but like how did they make the money to do that I mean, it has to be i mean it has to be from investors yeah I mean, it has yeah. to be he's got yeah he's got his investment team and like unlike hex he didn't sell his soul to the devil so he was able to like keep his ownership rights yeah and i mean it, i mean it has to be like i mean like all these like huge figures in the world that are like investing like the p like what is it in, in like the weekend tied to uh, like the Toronto Ultra in yeah, some way? And, the, and Post Malone just came out as a co owner of the Dallas Empire. Yeah, like I mean, it, it, like you have to say, like they have to have sold off pieces of their pieces of their company to make money to be able to buy into stuff like that. You know, it's, which I mean, just like a hundred thieves, you go in there and you get your you you get your investors ready, you get those meetings, and you walk yeah. in and. I, they throw all that money in those different funds, and sure enough, like you sell a good percentage of your team off, but the smart yeah. owners will always keep the majority stake in their team yeah. for when shit happens. Do for you like, think Nate you know, still has majority with all those investors? I, I, I think I think because he's so close to Hex, I think Hex has given him a lot of pointers along the way with everything that happened with him and Optic. Like, surely he has to be, you know, just kind of like kind of like a big brother kind of advice, like yo, like. You know, it's smart to take this kind of money, but make sure that at the end of the day, like your word is final. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I could be completely wrong, but I, I yeah. would hope that Nate Shot still has control over 100 Thieves and that if, you know, that hopefully Hex has kind of been there along the way, just kind of being in his ear, just a big brother type of thing. So, I, I don't know. I'd hope I so. Would say, I would say he might not have the complete, like, max ownership i know he i know he owns a good chunk and i'm sure the way he i'm sure he has it written in there some way because you know he is like the ceo of that company right he probably has a nice probably not a majority stake or claim but he's probably got a fat ass claim to where you know he still is always going to be the face like the problem with hex was he just sold off too much of this shit to yeah. where he literally, yeah, he was a CEO, but he sold off like ninety percent. They were saying over eighty percent of his team to one, you know, one individual enterprise. And yeah. you know, I get why he did it, and I understand it now. But I, it was just, you know, optics gone eventually, you know, essentially. So it was, it was the wrong move to make. You know, he he still made a pretty penny off it, and he's still going to be a. A major player because he goes right to NRG, and, yep. you know the rest yep. is history. But it could have it could have went a different route. But when you're in a situation like, and even he, you know, I'm not a huge Hex fan, but the way he even brought it up was like, dude, like all these other people, like we had to compete. Yeah, and you got you got an enterprise just like waving that blank check around, and like you, you know, like for me, if I had a blank check, it's like, well, fuck, man, I'm gonna have to jump into CS:GO, I'm gonna jump into this, and you yeah. just start, yeah, yeah. what's gonna happen? But you kind of forget like what if something happens to where my vision is no longer the key to this team and like they don't yeah. see it my way and you know the good thing of hex is and not for him but like he'll be uh almost a stepping stone for any other owner or anyone that ever gets to like a certain point to where if they do a breakout they're be like well fuck yeah i want to do it this way but i don't want to like make the same mistake as like somebody like hex i want to go the route of like a hash drill or even a a nade shot or someone like right right yeah, yeah for sure for sure at least that's how i would think about it like for sure don't make those same mistakes oh yeah shit, man like we started talking about some random shit we want to get back on that straight jacket game i just want to like whatever you want to talk about man when it comes to you and your squad like I'm interested. I, I like how you're a Call of Duty team because that's ex well, you know, Call of Duty is a big point of your team, right? Because because that's where Akara game. You know, we were Halo, and then it was always Call of Duty. 
Yeah, but, yeah. Call, call, Call of Duty. Call of Duty will always be, uh, will always be a part of us. I think for as long as you know we're a thing, or as long as you know whatever, you know. Because I mean, I gr- like I grew up playing Call of Duty. You know, from I think, uh, from World World at War, and Call of Duty Four. Like, I mean, I've always had roots in Call of Duty. All of my guys have had roots in Call of Duty. You know, so as long as long as I'm wanting com- to compete in titles, I'll always have a Call of Duty team, no matter what. You know, now, like I said, we are we are looking to expand into other titles, you know, but I've always made it a point that, you know, no matter if I have just a Call of Duty team or if I have every game in the world I have a team in, like I will always have a Call of Duty team no matter what, you know, so Call of Duty will always be there for us. Um, And like I said, like I'm big fans of other of other games and how they run competitively. You know, a, a lot of my guys in the team, you know, are super big fans of. Like I said, the the Rainbow Six scene, the Valorant scene, you know, the Halo scene, you know, all that. So, I mean, we have we have plans to kind of really be looking into it, but I'm not trying to just like just jump into all these kind of teams and all these different kind of games and not really be able to give my give our focus to it. You know what I mean? Right. Rather than signing a team for this game, this game, this game, this game, but we can only focus on Call of Duty right now and you know maybe we can kind of help out valorant or you know stuff like that you know so i just want to make it to where you know like anything that we do we're all giving it a hundred percent uh effort and focus into you know because at the end of the day like if you're not giving your all into something like you might as well not even be doing it you know so like i said as far as for the future like i've we've got we've got a few things under wraps uh some things that aren't really finalized right now but uh, Call of Duty. I'm kind of. I'm. I'm working my ass off to get Call of Duty going, uh, and we've got a couple of guys that are doing some things behind the scenes for Call of Duty and some other titles that we kind of want to expand into. And like I said, uh, some merch stuff that we're kind of going to get designed, and we want to start doing a lot of lot more content when uh, Cold War comes out, you know, and just random content just to really get our name out there. Like I think that's super important right now. Um, yeah. Like I said, we we have the foundation. And we ha- we have the foundation of who we are. Like, let's start expanding on it. Let's really start making a name for ourselves. I feel that. Yeah, Call of Duty, man. It's like the first love that like I want to throw it away so damn bad, but I always find myself trying. Yeah, it, it's to it's so toxic. To like do, the, it's I hate it's it, so toxic. The people in Call of Duty, the people in Call of Duty, everything like it's super toxic. But I mean, like. If if you didn't grow up playing Call of Duty, like it would be super easy to just say, "No, nah, fuck this game. I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want a Call of Duty team." But I mean, I, I think because if you've had roots in Call of Duty, like you'll always you'll always have Call of Duty somewhere. You'll always yeah, have yeah. ties to it, you know. So, like I said, as as long as Straight Jacket Gaming exists and I'm a part of that team, like I'll always have a Call of Duty team. You know, I whether I go through sixty five rosters in a in a in a title, like I'll always have a Call of Duty team. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> which ho- hopefully, hopefully Cold War, I don't have sixty five <laughs> rosters. You know, because because uh, we're dealing we're we're dealing with contracts now, so I'm not doing sixty five rosters. I'm not changing a roster every week. Like no, uh, mm-hmm. no, nah, we're no, nah, uh-uh. we're it's we're gonna pump the brakes on. We're gonna pump the brakes this year. Pumping the brakes this year, so. I think everybody, I think like a lot of organizations, like, and I know that like back in the day you had like your Halo orgs and like, like early esports, like old Starcraft and early CSGO and Counter-Strike in general. But like, I think Call of Duty really like brought people together for the idea of like, hey, we can make our own gaming org. Like whenever they saw like phase and optic uh blowing up and like sore on the early days like back in the day when you saw those mm-hmm. people blowing up you're just like dude anybody can do this and yeah, that's what yeah for sure, for sure. Started, uh, so many teams so many orgs that are unfortunately not here with us anymore but you know still to this day you have brand new orgs that come out of nowhere just because of like call of duty and it's crazy yeah yeah well, i think that's why i'm kind of like almost anti cd or uh cdl franchising in my own right it's like man I used to love going to like the UMG shit or like the MLG events. You have like 200 orgs in her. Like I know we have like the challenger leaks or the series yeah. still and stuff, but it, it just, it's not the same to me. So mm-hmm. I, I, I miss those days, man. of like being able to send a team down to Dallas for like UMG Dallas. And yeah. then they like, potentially win it. And then they get like, 
they make it to bracket and get like three owed by optic but hey they played optic but like <laughs> exactly and like they were such like boosts for orgs when it came to like recognition and shit it was just like man you could send a squad down there and if they just had like a top like 32 play scene or some shit yeah that's people eyes were, people knew yeah. exactly who they were and then you're like well now i have motivation to send them to the next one yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. it was those are the good days yeah, the challenger uh, stuff and they just ruin it man and like the problem is is like another thing that makes it harder for orgs nowadays i will say it's like easier and harder for orgs is like there's rumors that challengers next year will also be online and so you're not charging anything to these people to hop into these tournaments like game battles it's a completely free tournament so you hop in there. You're on PS4. You got five. You got four friends. Bam! You guys are Call of Duty challengers. It's no longer yeah. like oh we gr- we grind Call of Duty for we're like top page on the ladder. Blah blah blah. You know hey we need you guys to like you know help us out. We gotta fly to like somewhere. You know hotels, team passes, blah blah blah. It's just oh dude turn on your turn on your console man. I got to signed up. Don't worry about it. <laughs> like yeah yeah. Yeah, and I and I think like I think a lot of like a lot of kids these days like obviously there are organizations out there that can like financially support like fully sending people like I can pay for your full travel food all like all your amenities for an entire weekend you know and I think there's a lot of kids out there that don't really like understand how like financials work and I think a lot of kids approach an org and they just think oh they have a team we're fully funded under them. Like yeah. there's, I think there's a lot of teen, a lot of kids that expect too much, but they don't, they don't, they don't want, really want to prove their worth. You know, like I, I had a, I had a group of guys, uh, contact me last year for Black Ops Four. Like it was one guy DM'd me, and they were a team of five, and we, we were talking. I was wanting to pick them up and everything like that, and like they were literally like wanting to go to every single LAN event last year. <laughs> and I like and I told him I was like, bro, like like I literally can't do that. You know what I mean? Like I can't I can't send you to however many land events there were last year. Like I can't I can't afford team passes for all of that and traveling and all of that. Like I can't do that. You know, and then eventually I got blocked because of it by all five <laughs> of them because like because they because they thought that because I reached out interested in like kind of in talks to maybe want to pick them up, like they immediately thought, oh, he's gonna pay for everything. You know what I mean? So Yeah. I mean that's why that's why like this year like I like this year like me and my guys have kind of come together and we've you know come up with a with a game plan of like what can we what can we realistically do and provide you know we we've drawn up contracts and everything like that to what we can provide and if if players come to us and and they're like mm, that's not you know that's not enough for us okay well hey now you know what we can provide if you if you don't fuck with it then you know on to the next you know so right and, then, and there's a there's a lot of and there's a lot of kids out there that like understand how game like how teams actually work financials work and stuff like that and a lot of them are super cool with like how we like how we're able to do it you know a lot of a lot of kids are fine with like partial funding and you know being able to like okay like yes i can buy your team pass you know maybe i can't afford everybody's plane tickets but i mean if we can scrounge up a few hundred dollars to sim with you guys like we can do that and they're super cool with that Right. You know, so like at the at the end of the day, like to me, like my whole philosophy behind our team is it, like it's a marathon, not a sprint. You know, so like don't don't try to do too much. Don't try to overstress yourself. Don't try to overwork yourself for something that you know you realistically can't handle. You know, so that's something that I've preached to everybody that's come in contact with me with our team and everybody that's on our team now. Like they understand like we may have like ups and downs and you know, we may be on a high for a couple of days and we get a low and then we're on a high for a couple of months, you know, whatever the case may be, but it's always going to be a marathon. Like there's always going to be, you know, bumps in the road and all that kind of stuff like that. So that comes into play. Good support system. If you don't have that, then I, I, I think you're truly in, I think you're truly in the wrong business. If you don't have pe- people behind you that fuck with you, no matter what's going on. You're right. No, I agree with that. 100%, and then, like man. my thing is like, so there's so many, uh, call them like gullible kids too in the sense where they get these teams and they get these promises with no contracts and then they mm-hmm. get them they, they find themselves going out to these events and shit thinking they have stuff paid for a lot of the a lot of people think they're gonna get reimbursed because like oh he said he'll reimburse me on this blah 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 and they get out there and it's like you don't you didn't really win or do anything for this org so it's like hey yeah have fun 
there's no, there's no, con- up, no contract. It happens a lot, though. And, well, I've, and I've the dealt thing with is, a lot it of people. happens of like, well, even what last year that happened with uh, uh, Red Reserve, right? Mm-hmm. That I'm with Red Reserve and Denial last year yeah. at Call of Duty, where they just completely like. I Fucking think, denial, bro. Hell I yeah, all, denial. I think all of Red stuff. Reserve is still owed like over a hundred k. Like all five of yeah. those dudes are owed over a hundred thousand dollars still. And all homie has to do is just file bankruptcy in a sense. So it's just like, oh, that shit's gone, man. It's just a liquidation yeah. on those assets. And well, Does I mean, it even like, like that move? overseas, though. I don't know well, because Red Reserve the is guy in the UK. There, there were true, UK but, team. Yeah, but who? But it depends on who has the name, like their name on that damn ownership. And, yeah, like and, you know, like oh yeah, like could be like in Delaware or some shit. Like who who was yeah. in charge of the finances department? Like was it a guy out here in the states that was running the show on that? There's a lot of aspects. I don't know how the UK would work on it though. But if it's anything similar to US, like it could happen, man. Where it's just like all right, liquidation, bankruptcy, blah blah blah. He'll mark them down as people that he owed money to, and it's. It's That's over. Brutal. And then yeah. he can go ahead and ruin his credit. But if he's uh, you know, if he's good at talking, he can just start up a new business right away and yeah. do it all over again or put it in someone else's name and do the whole Ponzi scheme again. It's wild, yeah, man. Like, like, yeah, say, it's, yeah, like I mean con- I mean, there's a lot I mean, there's a lot of risky shit and a lot of bullshit that goes into like contracts in general, you know, but I mean at the end of the at the end of the day, like you're you're only protecting yourself as an owner. You know to have to have things in writing you know what right. i mean just to protect against people like you know like hey once you get once you get to the once you get to the land i'll give you the money back for your plane ticket you get to the land i'm not even there to give you your money back and i completely yeah. blocked you on twitter like you you have no way of contacting me you know so i mean it, it's just a good way to just protect yourself you know and at the end of the day like if you're a complete scumbag of a human being like you shouldn't even be doing stuff like this exactly you know what i mean right. like like if you're going to be in this kind of in this kind of market like you have to have some kind of heart like you have to have yeah. you have to be a decent human being you know there's so many people you deal with on a daily basis and it's a, it's like and it's not like uh where people will be like oh it's like a customer service job or some shit where you can fake it all the time like these are yeah. actual people's lives you like deal with on the daily basis and right. lot, and especially like and like you know the gaming scene there are a lot of a lot of kids man like a lot of like sometimes even like 13 year old kids who hit you up to be on a team or like you know a lot of the call of duty players like who aren't going to challengers are like 16 17 man and you can't yeah. just, you can't just do that to like kids especially you know yeah the thing is people will and they will continue yep. to do it yeah. but eventually you will fold and they will find out who you are it's just a matter of what happens after that. I mean, it's, yeah. well, there's so many people, it's, right? It's, uh, yeah. It's, it was it's it, wild. the original owner of UMG or whatever, like back in the day, he got caught doing some really scummy shit, something like that. And he's just been gone since like out of the <laughs> scene completely. Yeah. It's there's a lot of scumbags in the gaming, rather business wise yeah. or even as personal as, I mean, look at the dude from, uh, Oh, well, we just have Evo. He oh, wasn't scummy Evo. business wise. He was just a fucking pedophile. Like, <laughs> there's just like a lot nah. of your secret. Like, like, shit will come out, man. Like, it will come out. And Oof. so it's like, there's just so many scumbags in this community. It's like, it is. There are a lot, and especially like, especially in the FGC, man. Like, <laughs> especially in the FGC. I don't know if you know FGC a lot about, like, stuff. the Smash communities and all that stuff, Caleb, but it is a absolute shit show. <laughs> like, it's worse than Call of Duty ever could be. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, hey, I'm going I'm to make sure I say far away from that, then. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't, sure I I don't, I don't recommend that. going into that in that field yet. <laughs> Give it a couple nah. years if you ever want to get a player or two, because it is, it is a shit show over there. And that's why I'm almost glad, like, even though, like, the worst things that happened in a Call of Duty and Halo and shit like that, ain't nothing like that's, hap- that's happened yet. I don't think there right. will be, but yeah. not to the extent of what they've went through. Well, so I'm, that's, I'm, I'm think, almost happy to be part of this community. I think because- a part of it is, like, Call of Duty people aren't gonna, like, take your shit, you know? And if they find out about something like that, you're out, like, immediately. There's no, like, holding on to it for five years until the perfect time. It's like, you're gone. You're like you're oh, a piece of shit. You're out. 
Plus, you don't have like teams that have like a 14 year old player and like a 30 year old player on the same roster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's, that's what's made FGC, I think, kind of a, a shit show. But we'll, we'll get off that topic. But it's, it's wild. Bang just needs to come back and save the community. That's all I'm going to say. So, what else do we got? Is there anything else you want to talk about, Caleb, when it comes to you and your team, man? Anything, nah. anything, anything fun coming up or, uh, no, like I said, just, just the things that we have that we're just kind of working on behind the scenes, you know, which I mean, you, we I've, I've got I've got some things going on, you know, and I kind of I kind of like to just drop it all at one time. You know yeah, what I mean? Right. So, you know, that's kind of that's kind of how we like to do things. You know, we're, we're not a we, we don't like to just like as something happens, you know, just announce it. You know, I, I like to like, let's get a bigger picture. Let's get something big and let's just drop it all at once, you know, just out of nowhere. You know, so like I said, I, we've got we've got some things that we're working on, some more things that I want to do personally. Uh, which, like, I reached out to you guys about the podcast stuff uh, a while back. Like, that's something that I specifically want to do for us. You know, so right. there's a lot do of things it. like that, and content wise, and you know, uh, get some teams together and stuff like that. So it's it, it's all a process. At the end of the day, it's all a process. Marathon, not a sprint. You know, exactly. and I'll stand by that for I'll stand by that until you know till I'm dead. You know, so. All the process, but you know what I mean. You know, like we're we're, we're ready to start getting things going. You know, I'm not. You know, no more like just kind of lukewarm kind of stuff. You know, ride a high for a couple of days and then just die out for six months. You know, so I'm ready. We're ready to put our all into it this time. So awesome, man! I can't wait to see what happens. I'll be definitely making sure to keep in touch and check out what goes down if you and Straight Jacket Gaming. So. Let's run through like our last. Let's go through two more topics, man. Then what's we can call it a quits. What's this mention about uh CDL championships finished today? Dallas Empire, the victorious. Clayster, Clayster three rings, bro. He out here. Look, dog. I've been you know I've been supporting Clayster since fucking Black Ops two. Hell yeah, dude. That is I'm hyped. Him and Krim get three yeah. rings for the first uh to the first three people of Karma. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's that, the, that. It's the way they did it though in my book, like it was pure domination, bro. Like, yeah, that was that was a beatdown. Well, mm-hmm. I was looking at CDL Twitter as it was going down, and there were like a lot of the analysts. I follow a lot of the analysts for the teams, and a lot of them were like, "Holy shit!" Like Dallas Empire literally saved spots the entire year until Grand Finals of Champs. Like there were spots that they were pulling out that people didn't even know existed. Like if you saw in the winners' finals, well, Clay you- shot like Selium through the wall. Like, oh, I saw that one. Yeah, yeah that was wild. Huke was doing the same thing though. When you watched him, he up like they're like, "Why is Huke looking through like these two walls over here?" And they're like, "I wonder if he knows something." And sure enough, like I don't know what the glitch was or what was going on, but Huke Huke knew a few little tricks uh, that were going down. And then just watching like what I liked watching was like uh, was there hard points on. Uh, What's the what's the desert map, Chris? That or cave or whatever. Cave. Yeah, dude, those dudes were like they were brilliant on that map. Like just watching how their rotations and how they were willing to play that map, fucking was it was sick. Well, it's definitely yeah, I, go ahead, my bad, man. I think I think which uh, I think Dallas uh, altogether. I think Dallas was going to win that tournament anyways. Uh, whether they started in the winners bracket or if Faye started in the winners bracket, I think. I mean, Dallas. Like you said, they started off the year super rocky. Like I didn't, I didn't think that they were going to really do anything this year, you know. But I mean, they've they've turned it around. I think they won what three home series or yeah, something yeah. like that, you know, three home series, and then obviously the big one, you know. So like, I'm super happy for them, you know, super happy. So like I said, I I think that they were going to win that tournament regardless, you know. When I when I saw that it was them, Chicago, Phase, and London, obviously, you know, coming from old school optic, like I was pulling for Chicago. You know, but I knew once Chicago was out, I was like, okay, yeah, D- Dallas is going to win this. I wanted FaZe to win it, you know, but <laughs> da- I knew Dallas was going to win it. I-, I just thought Dallas had, you know, more more talent, more resilience, you know, and obviously, like, you put you put Krim6 in situations like that, Krim and Clayster, you know, with their, like, veteran leadership, like, you know, obviously, Krim last year in Black Ops 4, like, just completely just disappeared in champs, you know, but... And in past, like big tournaments like that, like him and Clayster, like they've always really been able to just stand up, you know, and then just the raw talent of like Shotzi and Illy and Hook, you know, like I, I, I'm super satisfied with how Dallas, with Dallas winning that one, yeah. you know, for sure. Like they, they were well deserved in my eyes. 
It was fun. Like, and I know, like this year starting off, I was like, "Who the fuck is Illy and Shotzi?" Like, dude, I didn't even know who the fuck Shotzi, these guys were. That makes Shotzi man, the first dudes. ever uh, multi FPS world ch- or multi game world champion. Yeah, Halo and Call of Duty. Yeah, dude. Yeah. They they were they were nasty as fuck on that game, and I think it just goes to show you, like, big props to Hastro, man. When it comes to COD championships, bro, like. Hastro is just the man. I like, saw he, that. He, he tweeted out earlier he, five out of eight grand finals. Yeah. Dude, Hastro's the man, man. Like, he, he's always, in my eyes, been like an owner that's always been kind of overlooked. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, it's hard to overlook this guy. He's done it so, like, the right way, man. And just the way he yeah. did, like, you know, built team enemies from the, and how he's got to this point. Like, yeah. Yeah. Dude's big, re- big respect. Big respect for Hastro. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think, and, and I knew, like, I thought that series was going to be a lot closer than it was. Like, 100%. Like, the grand final, like, I did not expect that. But I knew the game was over. Like, Dallas went up 3 0 because it was a best mm-hmm. of nine. And, like, you shoot to the player cams, and everybody on phase, simp just especially, sad. they're just pissed off. They're sad. They're not talking to each other. And that's where, like, Hastro was smart in making sure he had Clayster and Krim because those dudes have been around forever, like mm-hmm. absolutely ever. And like when somebody like Illy or Shotzi gets like pissed off or like starts getting like tilted, they're going to be able to be like, yo, dude, like you're good. Yeah, for sure. And without sure. being like, you know, the other 17 year old kid who's like, shut the fuck up, man. Like we're good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They have, yeah. they have the mentors and they have like, solid insane legendary like mentors for sure so that's definitely it dallas wins they're your champions did in dominating fashion and it, so it makes me wonder like imagine if the e united roster stayed together like they probably would have won champs because top three were in yeah you know, top three oh, yeah yeah i think if that roster stayed together i think they probably would have won oh you yeah know, I mean, for sure Simp and Abizi are fucking nasty, man. Like, mm-hmm. throw in, uh, our city's had a great year. Clay had a really good year. Pristini was hit or miss, but all uh, you know, four of your five guys are dominant. And Pristini just shows up. Like, yeah. Yeah. He, no. they, it just shows you how great that roster was, you know, that last year and how they ended and how dominant these players are going to be for, you know, maybe not Clayster as much or Pristini, but our city's Abizi and Simp, those dudes are going to be like, they're gonna be nasty for some years yeah. to come. I mean, yeah, they, yeah, they're, yeah, they're just. Skill. I think they're just getting started. They're just getting started. I think. Oh, well, they're skilled. Well, Abizi yeah. for sure. He Abizi was like, he was always kind of like the guy that you didn't really hear as much about. But man, he's fucking insane at this game. Just watching him, yeah, and the challenges he would do. And this is like, it's it's fun. I and mean, going into Cold War and just knowing that this title is probably gonna be a lot better. It should be a lot more fun. At least, at least for me. Like I wasn't a big guy to watch in it this year, but. I'll be more interested when it comes to Cold War and how it operates. Do you yep. think Shotzi's still thinking about going back to Halo now? After being a world champion? Nah. God? <laughs> nah. <laughs> no way. Oh no, no he, he may he may try uh, I mean unless they throw the bag at him, I mean he may he may try to go like uh, like gears or something. Like he may just try to like expand just to get accolades, but no, nah, I, I mean yeah. I think I think I think Shotzi I think Shotzi will stay with Call of Duty. Well the honest. good thing for him is Halo, you know coming out late at a later date now it's like oh keep thinking about it bro but you have some call of duty to play in the meantime so yeah yeah see no i think i think he's cool with the, with the call of duty after seeing that kind of purse so oh yeah, right. yeah especially and i mean especially kind of purse. <laughs> yeah especially if like if the dallas if like the dallas empire like really stays together how they are right now like i mean they i mean they were just hitting stride like the middle of the year like when they started winning their home series like they were really hitting stride and like now they're like super like they're operating really really well so i imagine i imagine if they go into cold war and they really start like doing some success or like really start making some noise in that game like i think i think they'll stick together hopefully hopefully and if not, you might see Shotzi on an Envy team anyway when it comes to Halo. Who knows how that yeah, works? Yeah, who knows? So yeah. That, like, they're they're, no they're not letting them like, go, that's for sure. Well, what was the buyout? I forget. He tweeted the pastor tweeted what the actual buyout for Shotzi was a long time ago. But Fucking it was insane. It was insane from Splice. Yeah, so yeah. there yeah, there's no there's no way they let him go, especially He's, for what they paid to get him. Like, nah. He's gonna be like Castro, you know, is his huke. That's how Hastro treated Huke for all those years. Like, Aaron wants, you know, you can have whoever the fuck you want. 
Hugh can't yeah. leave it no matter what. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. pay him what he needs. He might be on some bad teams. He might be on good teams. He might play Halo. He might play Call of Duty. But like Hugh is not going and anywhere. I think Shot is going to get that same treatment, just as much money as they've invested in. And I'm guaranteeing you, everybody on that Dallas Empire roster now is going to be on a multi-year contract. Like before, I guarantee you, Clay, Krim. Who can Shotzi run multi year contracts? I don't know if Illy necessarily was because he was like the new guy and Hastert didn't pay an insane amount for him. So I don't know if he was on a multi year, but I guarantee you he is now. Yeah, he will yeah. be after this event. So that's our uh, our Call of Duty. I just want to talk about like the whole gears real quick, just because okay. we are invested in the gears and how the they kind of like turned their back, I'd say, on the whole EU scene. No, <laughs> so, uh, for those that don't know, we just we ended up having a team that qualified and was playing in the Gears of War like uh, European Championships, and uh, now they're talking about how that's they're kind of like staying away from the EU scene and more focusing when it comes to like Latin America and uh, you know your North America. No, there's like not there's absolutely not a European Pro League next year at all. That's what I'm saying. So like <laughs> that's they they've literally have turned their back, and it's kind of wild because there have been some like really dominant fucking european teams nothing to the point of like what we're used to out here but i just thought that was pretty crazy and i was more sad in the fact that like we just got into the gears of war scene we have a latin america team but our our high profile team was a european like actually qualifying and playing in the gears of war championships so i don't know i just thought that was pretty wild i don't know if you had any thoughts on if that's a big mistake in there if that's a mistake or what's going to happen but I was sad. I was just sad to see it. I think it was dumb. Uh, like, you have these rosters. Like, you had big rosters, like, big names like uh, Splice and, like, Rise and stuff like that. And they were in they were in the European side. And it's just mm-hmm. like, why would you... I mean, I get it. Like, if you look back, they had, what, like, four European pro teams? But is that, like... Is that necessarily, like, at fault of the European scene? Or is that at fault of, like the coalition in gears of war for not allowing more than four pro teams for some dumb reason. Cause there's no way right. there was only 12. There was only six. I can't do math. There's five. <laughs> there's five people on gears team. Sorry. There's no way there's only 25 <laughs> players who are out there. Like, yeah, bro, this is our squad. This is it. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah. I just, I mean, what do you, do you have much to lose? Like what's there to lose of having like the European scene? I don't know. I just, I was just sad to see it. I didn't. I didn't understand what like why even get rid of it. Like, what's what what's the worst that could happen of having a whole other you know scene out in the in the EU? I, I just thought know. it was different. So even know. Call of Duty has like Japanese and APAC region shit. Like, yeah, right. And like, so if no, we flew know. out to Australia, we could easily win champs out there. Like. <laughs> 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 what, who was the Australian team? Was it was it Mind Freaks or whatever? Yeah, Mind Freak, I are... think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we probably could at least place pretty high, I'd say. Who knows? <laughs> at least in the money, bro. They pay out to like top twelve or they pay out to top twenty four in America and EU and champs at uh, challengers, yeah. which is crazy. <laughs> yeah, I was just trying to look at the see like what teams they had out there. Yeah. Rated R was your big team. Elevate was your big team. Oxygen was a big team. Hybe was a big team. You're like you had you had orgs out there that had some like recognition and names in that EU scene. So I don't know. I just thought that was kind of wild. Wasn't sure you had any thoughts on it, but I was sad because I was really starting to like get into the whole gears and having a team that was qualifying for that kind of like gears championship it was making me really like excited and happy to get into it. And now it's like oh. Well, I hope you enjoyed your one time because it's gone. <laughs> so yeah. it's uh, it's over. Hope, hope you enjoyed that little that little taste of being in the EU championships because uh, it, it, it's long gone from now. And I, I I was watching like all or reading all the uh, boycott gears posts and shit, but I just don't think they have enough out there. Yeah. And I heard that they they were gonna try to do something, but I I doubt it. Uh, one thing I do want to speak on real quick for me in this is I want to talk about our last podcast, but I completely forgot. It's gotten crazier now. You have the um, Epic versus Apple thing because of uh, Fortnite, which is mm-hmm. crazy. Absolutely insane. Like, complete like lawsuit out the gate. Like, 
Epic was prepared. They knew what Apple was going to do and they were ready for it. And then Microsoft jumps in on it with Epic because Microsoft wants Project X Cloud to be on iOS, but Apple doesn't. And so they're trying to do this all, which is like, it's crazy. Like not a lot of like major news and stuff. They're never going to talk about this stuff, but they should like, this is huge for like the consumer. Like this is extremely right. pro consumer. Like Apple is the, like, I know I have an iPhone, but like Apple is the worst, like consumer friendly, like corporation out there. And so yeah. like, it is ridiculous, man. Like, I want to have Project X Cloud on my iPhone. Like, there's no reason I can't. And your like Android phone for one hundred twenty dollars from Walmart can, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. I don't so, know. All that, all that stuff, all that stuff is just, it's just crazy. Apple's, Apple's always pretty petty too. Like, yeah. Even if they lose this lawsuit, like I've heard of, I've heard of stories of them like paying off their. Uh, paying off like in coins and shit to like actual like my uh samsung i know when they had a deal with like samsung i don't know who who lost i think it was apple lost to samsung yeah. so they sent them like they sent them like three trucks full of just like fucking change what to pay off like millions of dollars like yeah like three like brinks well, trucks like just apple went there literally and go them. after like they'll go after people who like repair macs and stuff like macbooks and like even people who will like collect old Macs out of like landfills and then like reuse parts that are still good, they'll go after people for that shit. And it's crazy. Yeah. Said, Show me that. Don't forget about the COD lawsuit. Oh, yeah. So uh, Activision and uh, have dev- uh, uh, filed a lawsuit against a bunch of the modding, like hacking uh, websites for Warzone. Cause like I, I don't know if I showed you it, Nick, but the other day I literally just looked up on Google. Warzone hacks, and for thirteen dollars a day, you can have wall hacks and aimbot. <laughs> like, so yeah, no, so no, I, th- uh, I think I think that's huge. I think that's huge. Which I mean, active at like Activision should have had like precaution, like should have had you know stuff in place for hacking. Like, I mean, well, yeah, hacking I mean, in Call of Duty has been around for years, you well, know, and now like. Yeah, what's wild to me is that now that they're partnered with Blizzard, is Blizzard is a PC based like company, and they have like a bunch of titles. Like, why? Where's Blizzard's anti cheat or like people just not yeah. hack in other games as like as opposed to Call of Duty? Like, maybe you're not as likely to run into a hacker on like Overwatch or Hearthstone as you are, you know, COD. But right. at the same time, it's like, what the what the hell's going on, man? <laughs> Because for a while, hackers were everywhere. Shit, yeah. I got hackers in a CDL playlist game one time. No, actually, just a couple weeks ago, me and my buddies were playing game battles. The number three team on the ladder, they might still be, but if you look at it, they're all banned because they were using wall hacks in game battles. <laughs> like, just, just, <laughs> just losers, really. Just like, come on, man. It's like, oh, you're uh, like 150, you know? Wow, bro. It's because you're a fucking cheater. <laughs> like, like, yeah, I mean, is the re- like, is that recognition really worth it? Knowing that you, I don't know, I don't know. Cheating is just, oh yeah, especially like, like, especially in Warzone, like it, it's insane. It's insane. And people talk about like the most infamous cheater of all time is still. Well, thankfully, I don't think he has any like recognition anymore. But Bezo, if he, if if you guys remember him. I fucking uh, hate that dude. Bro. He's he such was a loser. He's like the number one. He's ranked number one on MLG's website, and he just boots people offline. It, like, and it gets mad when you get when he gets called out for it. <laughs> he'll just block you and act like he doesn't do it. <laughs> yeah, he's a jerk. I don't know. The, the, yeah, you're a scumbag too. If you're boot, if you're still booting people offline, like, <laughs> like, oh, like you ain't got nothing else better to do, dude. Like, come on, man. Facts, man. Like, how do you have fun booting people offline? Like, I never understood. Like, there's no fun in cheating. I don't know. Oh, uh, I, I, I think which <laughs> isn't Treyarch supposed to take over Warzone technically, right? Well, Raven made Warzone, and right. so I think it's just going to be Raven, like continuing okay. on. Like, I mean, 
Activision has got to do something. Otherwise, like, otherwise, I mean, Warzone's, I mean, Warzone's super good. Like, Warzone's great, you know? So, I mean, if they don't, if they don't have, like, these anti-cheat softwares and things, like, where they're not, like, actually working to end this stuff, like, it's just going to ruin the game, you know? Because, I mean, I mean, one cheater sees that this guy got away with it. Oh, I can get away with it, too. And then now two guys turns into 20, and now, like, every single time you get into a game, there's, like, out of the 100 people that's in there, 50 of them are hacking. Like, like, like Activision has got to, like, they know it's an issue. They've got to do something. They've got exactly. to do something. They they can't send out, they can't send out graphics, like, asking people, please stop doing this. Like, <laughs> yeah. no. Like, please stop. Like, nah. <laughs> You, like please no, you gotta do this. you gotta do a little bit more than just please stop. Like no, nah. <laughs> right, right on. Well, shit, fellas, I think we hit everything plus a little extra. Caleb, is there anything else you want to talk about, man? Any uh, where can people find your team exactly? What's your Twitter? All that good stuff. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter uh, at SJ Gaming underscore. I, I need to get that fixed. There, there's a guy that has just straight SJ Gaming hasn't tweeted in like eight years. That like I can't I can't get that at like I need it. But no, nah, uh, at SJ Gaming underscore, you know, uh, just keep your eyes out. We got some stuff under wraps. Like I said, and it'll be once everything gets finalized, it, it'll it'll be it'll be dropped. It'll be dropped, and we're we're gonna be we're gonna be hitting it. We're gonna be hitting it. So. Yeah, man. I look forward to it. And well, I appreciate you coming on the podcast and at least chatting with us. Hope everything went all right for you. Hope it went smooth. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, for sure, for sure. Appreciate you guys having me on. Sure, man. Definitely gonna, definitely gonna keep in touch with you because I. Uh, it's nice knowing some extra, uh, some other owners. Maybe we can get oh, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Hit me up, and like I said, I mean, I can, I mean, I can bring on you know a couple, one or two of my other guys if you're ever interested. Like, I mean, we're always down. You know, awesome. I will always be down. down, always down. Cool, oh, yeah. fellas. Did you have anything else to say, guys? Anything else you need to say out? No, I think I'm good, man. Uh, I'm straight. I'm straight. Appreciate you guys for having me on, though. Uh, Appreciate appreciate you coming out. Thanks for everybody that's that tuned in at some point today. I know we (laughs) ran away longer than I actually thought we would. So, you know, viewers dip, but we're gonna end up posting this on YouTube as well. So, for everybody that did come out, much love, much appreciated. Um, I got nothing else, fellas. Like, I think it went going pretty smooth. It yeah, was no, nice. I'm to, straight. I'm straight. It was, it was great to learn about you, Caleb. Great to learn about Straight Jacket Gaming. Definitely look but forward yeah, for to sure, seeing for what's sure. going to happen. But I don't know, Chris. Go ahead, dog. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to meet you guys out for the intro. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We appreciate it. Make sure you check out Caleb here on Twitter at Webula. And we'll catch you guys later for Cage's episode 21 with another special guest. Have a good night, everybody. Peace out.